And thank you for giving me, I mean, to have a chance to give a talk here and it's more interesting than I expected. I have been working on the natural resource management for the last four years and probably deviated from your like, common interest. But I want <coughs> to introduce like, a simple game model which is related to like, the research concern. And uh, we built this model two years ago. And when I had a chance to visit the IASA, and we, anyway, this is a very simple model named the Games of Corruption. We built this model to discuss ways to suppress illegal logging, which is like, a serious problem in tropical area. It is, this is a picture of illegally logged trees in Indonesia. Even if it is, this was like a very beautiful one, tree, but it was cut like this, even in the national park. And this is more stunning example. And this area is located in protected areas, and it is very thick to penetrating what's happening inside. But someone can just follow from the airplane find out know what is happening inside a very vast area was cleared like this in Cambodia. But Indonesia or Cambodia are not the only places where the legal logging is happening. And to Bolivia or Papua New Guinea, very high percentage, like 80 or over 70 or 80 percent of its open total production is regarded as illegally done. But these countries established a reserve for the preserving biodiversity and conservation, but, uh, which means there is persons who has like responsibility to protect this. But somehow they are not the passionate to implement this kind of their duty. So maybe probably they are very lazy or they are taking some bribes and overlooking the illegal logging. This figure is supporting our suspicion, showing that there is like a high relation between the corruption and the illegal forest activities. The forest is kind of a common resource, therefore we have to like suppress our desire to cut the trees. So otherwise we cannot we cannot persuade the others to join the sustainable use of the common resources like forests. Uh, that's why we are focusing on this phenomenon, the corruption, which is the fear of the illegal logging. So, uh, we want to simplify this situation, so the, the set assumptions for the model. Uh, first, we, we are assuming the community management mm -hmm. for simplicity. The community near the forest has kind of authority or power to maintain the communal forest. Because they have this kind of power, they have like um, they have right to decide like a set of rules for the management. So they can decide how much how many trees can be cut per individual, or what kind of punishment level can be and should be done for the rule breakers. To implement this set of rules, they need kind of like information. They need to collect information. So which which community members is breaking the rules or who is like respecting the rules? The tracing all the community members must be very costly so they can come up with the idea. To hire to specify the labor is called enforcers to stabilize the disciples. But if the enforcers are very honest, maybe this is the end of the story. But we know that there is possibility that these enforcers can be bribed by the legal lovers. Which means basically we have two types of harvesters who is using the resources. The first one is the community members. They have an I mean, intention to maintain the forest in the ecosystem service. So they do some make uh, effort for the maintenance, they are therefore the benefiting the other harvesters. So they are deserved the name of co -breaker. So on the other hand, they are, there are people who want to just cut the trees and set the logs and uh, getting some extra cash income. So by definition, this is illegal logging, so they are called defectors. So, uh, 
Uh, let me introduce the parameters because we want to organize this situation and link this situation to the game theory payoff phase of the And the B is the improvement of the fitness which will be enjoyed by each player at one unit of cooperation. And the large K is making income from the selling of the trees. And if we replace K minus B like by C to denote the net cost of cooperation, then we can corresponding our situation to this payoff matrix. We all know that the players in this game getting nothing from this interaction. So community members want to hire the rule enforcer who wants to find the defectors. And then enforcer, these enforcers can be two types. One is refusing bribe called honest enforcer or taking bribe called the corrupt enforcer. And let me explain more detail about the harvester strategy. We said that the community has the power to manage, therefore they should I mean they should have like responsibility to fund for the enforcement service. So and we like we give some freedom whether the community members can commit or not. So basically we have like two types of two types of strategy being properly for maintenance of the forest or they do illegal logging. And then they they can choose among commit or not commit. So we have like four strategies. And then the problem is um, if someone wants to cooperate and using the enforcement service, still we have like just defector, illegal log logger who is like ignoring the commitment, I mean, I mean enforcement, so they can abuse our community cooperator. So we should add one more strategy, a little bit smarter, so who is called a conditional cooperator. So they are acting like committing cooperator if co-player is committing, or they are just acting like defector if co-player is non-committing. And maybe a bit complicated, but I want to address that we can, uh, we, we just need to remember three strategies because the two strategy committing cooperator and cooperator will be defeated, defeated by the other strategy. So we have only three types of harvesters committing defect, I mean, illegal logger who is using the rule enforcer and, we, and just illegal logger who is ignoring the rule enforcer and cooperating harvesters. And these are parameters we are introducing. So, benefit, um, the net benefit of the cooperation will be positive, and the penalty to illegal logger should should cancel the benefit. Um, should cancel the benefit to by the defector, and the small s is fee for the enforcement service, and also the bribe is smaller than cost. And this is a standard together dynamics we are applying. So they are just dropping or adopting their strategy when the income difference will disappear. And this payoff will depend the fraction of all harvesters, uh, or players like harvesters and enforcers. And it's applied in enforcer population. And then this is our research. And because we have like two calculations, we have like three dimensional prism. The triangle, the upper part of the triangle, means there are many cooperating harvesters, and the later part of the tri triangle means there are many illegal lovers. And because we have like many uh, different directions, of uh, different combinations of two types of enforcers, we should add one I mean, edge. And we found that uh, the system will be bi-stable. Okay. And I traced, uh, I chose like many different, the initial conditions and traces from the initial condition to the last. And we found that uh, the, even if we are starting from the many different social conditions, the results can be like classified into two parts, I mean two types. One is colored green and one is colored orange. So maybe this is useful to understand 
This is a case where the enforcer is always honest, which means the, the illegal lover who tried to bribe the enforcer will be punished. Therefore, the, the harvesters is benefit, mutually benefiting each other, so maintenance, therefore the maintenance of the forest will go well in this situation. On the other hand, if the enforcer is corrupt, then the illegal lover who is bribing the enforcer will be successful, and therefore the forest will be depleted. So we understand that the which type among, I mean, between the, the cooperating harvester and the bribing illegal lover, which well, is dominant, is important to understand the situation. So we found that uh, the ratio between these two strategies will depend on the, the, the fraction of honest enforcers. And there is a critical abundance of honest enforcers. If the honest enforcer is abundant, then always the co cooperating harvester will increase. On the other hand, uh, if the honest enforcer is less than the that abundance, then the illegal lover, bribing illegal lover, will be, will be dominant, and therefore, finally, the just the illegal lover who is ignoring the enforcement of this will be dominant. And then what would happen in the enforcer's population? And by simple calculation, we can find that the honest enforcer is always decreasing with time with the existence of the bribing the illegal lovers. Then maybe you can easily think that the system has only the, the, the defective features, but we found that the bias every stage, then why? So we produce another version of the projection of the, this prism into the face, which is including two edges, the two convergent edges. One is cooperative segment of equilibrium, colored green, and the one is Defective segment of equilibrium. So the x axis is a fraction of honest enforcer, which means the right part is there are full of honest enforcer, and the left part is the full of corrupt enforcer. And the y axis is fraction of conditional cooperator to so cooperating harvesters. The upper part, uh, the later part, is uh, consisting of many legal lovers. So the, the trajectory, the project trajectory set, is, uh, of course, because we, we know that uh, always honest enforcement is decreasing, the trajectory shows that uh, there is like the force shifting the trajectory into like the left. But still, there is uh, the, the tendency to, to, the, to make the trajectory of straight up and which is the cooperative segment of the equilibrium. Uh, which means if we start from the honest enforcer initially, uh, although we have like many illegal lovers at the first moment, but still there is a chance for the illegal lover to correct their behavior and realize the mutual benefit between the harvesters, so population can be end up with a very cooperative situation. After reach that station, at that stage, and there's uh, the state, the system will be stuck into the 100% cooperation because all the harvesters will become very cooperative. There is no incentive for them to bribe the enforcers. On the other hand, if the if the system will be is like a, started with many corrupt enforcers, although there are many cooperative harvesters who has willingness to maintain the forest. Finally, they are losing their entries and then they are just getting involved in illegal logging. And after all happens, it becomes illegal logging and then there is no incentive to hire the reinforcers. So just stuck in that situation and there is no like a force to change the system. So this is a summary of the basic model. So we found the system is bi-stable depending on the initial state, which means they are like two very different situations versus like just depleted forest or the well-managed forest. So 
So let me uh, discuss about the mutation rate. Is that so we found that like, it's a very different situation, by similarity. But here, if we did think about the mutation rate, we found another thing. So random exchange means uh, the players, harvesters, or enforcers can change their strategy regardless of their concern about the income may pay off. So, so usually this kind of random change cannot change the system very much, but if uh, but in this case it, it, it changes a lot. Especially found that uh, the random change like from the corrupt to the honest or from honest to corrupt strategy is very important. This figure is demonstrating that aspect. Here, um, here we found that one globally stable stage and the with mostly cooperative like harvesters. And this is the case. This is the same figures, just applying the mutation rate here. So the two edges are convergent. I mean the com uh, to convergent uh, equilibria, which means there is no selection pressure, especially for enforcer. So that's the where, I mean, the, the mutation rate, in the, the random change in the enforcer population has a strong in influence. In this case, uh, we set the expression rate between corrupt and honest is the same, which means the end point will be like near the 0 0.5. So the two convergence stage, the beta model, will finally, even if they are uh, seems to approach two different equilibria, they are finally converged to the level balanced type of enforcer type. So which means that they will end up with like 100%, almost 100% cooperation because honest enforcer will make the system very cooperative. So this is the case when the random change is the same rate. But of course, we can think about the case where the, the people want more easily to choose to be like corrupt than to be honest. In this case, uh, the final, final, final stage of, of the um, where the, the mutation uh, random change rate decides it is very close to the corrupt, very corrupt stage, which means the corrupt enforcer is really strong, so illegal login is kind of dominant here. So in this case, we think we found that the weak mutation in enforcer determines the evolutionary outcome very much which means probably education for the enforcer is very important. Finally, we want to discuss what if we can distinguish or if we can utilize the information on the honest of the enforcer, which means the harvester can distinguish which one is honest or which one is corrupt. In this case, we think that probably honest enforcer is known to be very, I mean, honest always, but Corrupt enforcer can be known to be corrupt with kind of probability P, which means this information is not complete. And then conditional cooperator, and this is a behavior rule for the assumption the conditional cooperator use a good enforcer only if they think the enforcer is honest and committing um, the bribing illegal lover use the enforcer only if they think the enforcer is corrupt. I skipped all the details, but the uh, research said that equilibria, although we have like a few few cases where the the result is end up with the defection, illegal logging, but mostly these case information is very effective to foster the cooperation. So this conclusion of this, like Little, I mean, small modification of the model is the information, the enforcer type is available to harvesters, maybe they are more likely to cooperate. 
the messages. If we extract the messages for the policy implication, probably even if we are applying the same system into the like for the management, probably the result can be very different according to the social condition. And secondly, is building psychological barrier against corruption, especially for the enforcers, can be useful. And also the idea of the circulating information of the enforcers on this can be useful. Okay, thank you. Very interesting talk. So, do you have any questions? Uh, please. Thank you very much for your interesting, uh, so nice presentation. Um, so, uh, because of uh, so your was us uh, morning presentation, uh, this afternoon presentation. Uh, so, I has been. Uh, I have been interested in so considering uh, ecological dynamics of forest because uh, so even though your title including illegal logging but your model so doesn't include anything about uh, so and resource dynamics uh, yeah resource dynamics yes and I remember in Japan uh, for example 20 years ago or 15 years ago. Um, so Tsukubo Tsukua University's Akiyama Eizo and uh, Kaneko Kunihiko uh, invested uh, lumberjack uh, dilemma games, so which includes uh, so socio-ecological dynamics. So tree is so grow growing, and uh, lumberjack can make a decision to or uh, so to cut the young tree, so as a kind of defector, or so uh, to wait for. Its growth uh, as uh, a cooperator. Such yes. So, uh, what do you think about considering uh, ecological uh, forest dynamics? Uh, into this matter. Yeah. <laughs> we implicitly, I mean, assume that uh, the illegal logger is like a critical and maybe their use of the resources. But if we are introducing the resource dynamics, maybe we should think about the payoff metrics. I mean, uh, it, it can change our met payoff metrics for the cooperator and illegal lovers too. So maybe it's more complicated, but we want to address the, the aspect of corruption thing a bit here. So maybe that will be a very interesting suggestion, maybe, but will be very complicated, I think. Thank you. Well, thanks for your interesting question. So, any other question? Okay, may I ask you a technical question? So, we all know that in mathematical biology, to prove the global stability is a very difficult question. So, in your, in your paper, you prove this based on numerical simulations or on some mathematical way to prove that? Okay. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can understand. So, uh, I don't have a lot of here. So, you have proved it uh, global object stability. Have you uh, proved it uh, global stability? No. Okay, I don't. That's the number record. You, you know that. So, this number, uh, this number you give it is just a uh, bad number, not a uh, Maths. Uh, use never maths tools. You know, you have to know function. Uh, you have to function, so it's a mathematical way to use it. It's the only one. It's not the only one, but most use ways uh, to prove the global stability. I have seen you, uh, in, uh, the, uh, you have the global. Stability. Uh, that's one. Oh no. Oh, that's the global stability. Uh, yes, here. Uh, you you say uh, G one uh, plus G two. This is the condition. So no, I mean the, on the edge there is like driving force for the harvesters is to be cooperator. 
So probably the that is like kind of stable. Okay. So it's a uh, uh, so your is it's not a certain uh, condition for the global stability. Mm -hmm. The social condition is to say that uh, in math, uh, uh, when have this uh, condition, it, uh, it is uh, global. Uh, I didn't analyze it in the first manner, so maybe we get from that. Thank you. Thank you for your last talk. So, in your talk, at the beginning, you introduced the background of the corruption in the forestry management. So I still think maybe this in the real in this system it should be a finite system. And uh, in your study, you consider the, the replicator dynamics. So it means I understand it indicates that it's uh, corresponding to the infinite populations. So in your study, have you considered the situations of the finite population size? I tried, but I didn't finish that yet, so yes, I did. And I agree So based on your questions, I have one more question. Mm -hmm. So at the very beginning, you, you showed that it's a bistable mm -hmm. case. So it's impossible to calculate the hyperplane and separate with the basis of fractions of two red factors. Is this possible to calculate numerically? Or have you tried it? Uh, I have tried that, but the curve was not that pretty to show. So. Because you know, in economics, it's very important to compare the basis of traction mm -hmm. to, to check which if you have larger basis of traction. Mm -hmm. So this may be interesting. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So shall we? Because we still have 15 minutes. So we finished 15 minutes earlier. Shall we move to the coffee break and uh, we can continue our discussion? So the next session will start at at at, at four o'clock. Okay. <laughs>